Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway just released their latest Form 13F, and this document reveals every move he made last quarter and gives us an update on his entire portfolio. Buffett actually made quite a few interesting moves this quarter, so in this video, I want to look at a few key takeaways. I also put together an entirely free spreadsheet with details on all the holdings in Buffett's portfolio, so if you'd like to download it, just click on the link in the description or the pinned comment. Now let's go ahead and dig in. Now to start out, one of the first key takeaways that you will notice is Berkshire currently has a massive cash position. This is one of the largest they've ever had. The company's current cash position grew from around $108 billion in Q2 of 2022 to $189 billion in the first quarter of 2024, but here's where things get crazy. In Q2, Berkshire increased the cash position to $277 billion. So right now, Buffett is completely comfortable holding a very large cash position. And from what I've seen, he hasn't given us too much insight as to why that is. Now, the second key takeaway is we can simply see Buffett's buys and sells. And to make this a little bit easier, let's actually jump over to the free website Dataroma, and we can go over all of these moves. Now, Buffett currently has 41 different positions in his portfolio, but we can see all of the additions, new buys, and all the sales and reduced positions right here. So let's go ahead and take a quick glance at each one of them. Now, one of the first things that I want to point out is there aren't really any massive moves here except for a huge reduction in his Apple position. And we'll talk more about this later in the video, but we can see he added capital to Sirius XM Holdings, added capital to Liberty Sirius Series A stock and Series C. He added more capital to Chubb Limited, that stock ticker CB, a financial stock that he recently started adding to his portfolio. He also has OXY, but then two new additions. We have ULTA, that's Ulta Beauty. This is an interesting one. And then we have HEI.A, another interesting one. We can also see he reduced capital in Liberty Media Corp Series A stock and Series C. He slightly reduced his Chevron position, which is a pretty large one in his portfolio. He reduced his Louisiana Pacific position, his T-Mobile position, his Floor and Decor Holdings, his Capital One Financial position, again, Apple stock, huge reduction, but then he sold out of two positions entirely. One was Paramount Global, and then we have Snowflake, and we'll touch on Paramount more here in a minute. So overall, we saw 17 different transactions in Q2 of 2024. Now, like I mentioned, the biggest move was selling Apple stock, and this has been talked about pretty frequently over the past few weeks. And like I mentioned, he reduced this position by nearly half, reduced it by 49.33%. And to put this into perspective, in Q2 of 2023, Apple made up 51% of the entire Berkshire Hathaway portfolio. Now, as of right now, it's still a pretty large position. It makes up around 30.09%. And to be fair, part of the reason it still makes up such a large position in his portfolio is because the run-up in share price over the past few years. To put this into perspective, Apple, over the past year, up 23.5%. And if we look at them in the past five years alone, up 337%. So obviously, this position has done very well. But what's also interesting is Buffett has now sold shares of Apple for three quarters in a row. And a few months ago, Buffett was actually asked why he started selling his position, and he basically stated that it was mainly due to tax reasons, but he also likes being able to build a larger cash position. So I'll go ahead and play this quick clip from Buffett. We will end up, in, unless something dramatically happens that really changes capital allocation, uh, a strategy, and uh, uh, we, we, will, uh, we will have Apple as our largest investment, uh, but I don't mind at all under current conditions building uh, the uh, cash position. Now, like I mentioned earlier, one of the more interesting moves was completely selling out of Paramount Global, and he started selling this position actually last quarter. He sold a pretty large chunk of it, and then he entirely sold out of the rest of his shares this quarter. In Q1 of 2022, that's when Berkshire started initiating position in Paramount Global. And Warren Buffett has stated it was his decision to buy into the stock. We can see he added capital in Q2 of 2022, Q3, Q4, and Q1 of 2023. And since the beginning of 2022, Paramount Global is actually down 68%, so down a massive amount while the market is up by a pretty large amount. So really, this is just a simple reminder. Warren Buffett is not correct 100% of the time. Nobody is. And a big mistake we see all too often is people want to copy famous investors' trades. But the reality is that everyone has a different time horizon, different risk tolerance, and different goals. Warren Buffett can afford to be a little more risky if he decides to do so. And it's very realistic that his time frame is probably very different than yours. So sure, it can give you confidence when you see super investors making similar moves to you, but again, don't blindly follow their moves. And then perhaps the most interesting takeaway in my opinion is Buffett is now a net seller of stocks. Berkshire Hathaway has now been a net seller of stocks 
for the seventh straight quarter. So they've been selling off quite a bit for the past couple of years. Let's go ahead and put this into perspective. First off, Buffett sold over 77 billion worth of stocks in Q2, and that exceeds any amount Buffett has ever sold in any given year, let alone a single quarter. And if we wanna put this into even more perspective, Buffett had about 1.6 billion in stock purchases last quarter. So 1.6 billion in stock purchases last quarter, versus selling over 77 billion worth of stocks. That is a massive difference. So we're seeing a lot of selling and building up that cash position. It's pretty interesting. So his cash position is larger than ever and he's selling more stocks than ever. Our sixth key takeaway is that he's betting big on top holdings and this is nothing new for Warren Buffett. Again, he has 41 total holdings in his portfolio and about 90.48% of this is in his top 10 stocks and 73% in his top five stocks. Let's jump over to Dataroma again and take a look at the top holdings in his portfolio. We'll go ahead and scroll down again. Like I mentioned earlier, even with a large reduction in Apple stock, this makes up around 30% of his portfolio and he continues to expect it to be one of the largest holdings. We then have Bank of America, around 14.67% of his portfolio, American Express, around 12.54%, Coca-Cola, a position he's held for a very long time, and he actually has a yield on cost on this position of over 50%. We have Chevron at about 6.63%, and this was a slightly reduced position in the most recent quarter. We then have OXY, another oil stock. He added just a little capital this quarter. We also have Kraft Heinz, Moody's, and then we have Chubb Limited. This is his newer addition to his portfolio added in just the last year. And then the 10th largest position in his portfolio is DVA, DaVita Healthcare Partners. We can see Citigroup makes up about 1.25% of his portfolio, but other than that, each position is less than 1%. So there's a lot of very small positions in this portfolio. And then if we take a quick glance at some key facts from Buffett's portfolio, nine out of 10 of Buffett's largest holdings actually do pay a dividend. We've always known he does like his dividend paying stocks in the right circumstances. The average holding time for each of the positions in Warren Buffett's portfolio right now is about six years. And like I mentioned earlier, the portfolio value is now sitting at about 280 billion. There's definitely plenty of research that could be done into each of these moves. But in my opinion, one of the most interesting ones is adding for the first time Ulta Beauty to his portfolio. Again, this is a small addition to his portfolio, but Ulta is really interesting at its current price. Let's go ahead and go over to Seeking Alpha and plug in Ulta up here and I'll show you what I mean. Now, first off, we can see Ulta Beauty over the past year is down around 28.24%. The company's trading at $329.05 per share. Now this is a makeup company. They operate in specialty retail. And I know a lot of people don't like to invest in retail companies, but I do think this one presents an interesting opportunity. And it's actually quite a bit more high quality than a lot of other retail stocks. And I'll show you what I mean if we jump over to my stock screener. Now, like always, if you'd like to be able to download any of my spreadsheets and also get access to the ticker data add-on on Google Sheets that allows you to automatically import stock financials straight into your spreadsheet, then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. Now, if we come up here and plug in ULTA and hit enter, and we can see all this data will load in. Now, first off, this is not a stock that pays a dividend, but there's a lot of signs that this is a high quality company. So first off, look at revenue per share. We've seen this grow at a very rapid rate over the past decade, going from around $35.10 to in 2023, $198.60. The same has been true for free cash flow and for earnings per share. We're seeing very consistent levels of high growth from all of these key metrics here, earnings, free cash flow, and revenue. We can see they have been buying back shares over the past decade, going from around 63 million to in 2023 down to around 51.4 million. And what's really interesting is they have very high levels of return on invested capital. Now, keep in mind, ROIC, this is telling us how profitable are the projects that the company is investing into. So typically we wanna see above 10%. But Ulta Beauty in 2023 was at 32.07%. 2022, 29%. Now they had a couple of lower years here in 2021 at about 9%. But 2020 was actually really good too, 18.28%. So they're consistently getting high levels of return on invested capital. This is a key metric for searching for quality stocks. So this is a good sign. If we jump over to the profitability spreadsheet, I've already plugged in Ulta Beauty and we can see gross profit ratio took a little bit of a dip in 2021. But over the past couple of years, it's actually been higher than it has been over the past decade. For example, in 2023, the gross profit ratio was at 39.62%, while the 10-year average is sitting at about 35.91%. So again, that's a good sign. They're seeing double-digit revenue growth over the past 5 and 10 years, and the same is true with net income. If we jump back over to Seeking Alpha and click on earnings and look at some of the earnings estimates, what we can see is earnings are expected to really grow at a high rate over the next year. But other than that, 
a lot of analysts are projecting double digit earnings growth. That's a good sign. And if we look back at my stock screener, based on 2023 free cash flow, the company currently has a free cash flow yield of close to 7%, so it looks like it's trading at a pretty decent value. So overall, this will definitely be a stock I'm following closely, and I'll be interested to see how Buffett does with this position. So go ahead and let me know what you think of all these moves that Warren Buffett has recently made. And again, if you'd like a free spreadsheet with details on all the holdings in Warren Buffett's portfolio, then you can click on the link in the description or in the pinned comment. And again, like always, if you'd like to, go to download any of my spreadsheets and also get access to the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets, then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.